This week, we're kicking off a brand new journey with your 4x4. It's our sunny coast adventure. We get up there, these rock pools looked amazing. And it just opened up, it is unreal. The water was clear as, it did not let down our expectations. You can see all the colours throughout the sand. Absolutely phenomenal. Queensland second to none for its beaches, just incredible. This is why Queensland is one of the best locations in the world. That view really took my breath away. All the colours of the rainbow we got to see. As we've turned left, we've noticed that everybody's gone through a deep water hole. That's when everything started to go wrong. Oh, I've got water in under the dash. It had about a litre of water sitting in the airbox. It was absolutely saturated. Unfortunately, I had to break the news to everyone. Someone's not going to make it. Iveco's dead. Ended up being a very long night. This adventure has taken us to the beach, taken us to the ocean, it's taken us into the ocean. The waves are coming up through the water and we're like, oh no. Queensland has so many great four draft tracks, no one is the four draft state. Four draft tracks, bog holes, and we've gone from the beaches to the bush. There's motocross, there's motorbikes, there's four wheel drive tracks. It was a great, great night. What an awesome time. Can't wait to catch up with the guys again. What an amazing adventure. G'day guys, I'm Matt Swift and I'm from ARB head office in Queensland. We met up at Oztrack campus at Caboolture this morning, so we got to catch up with all of the crew, met some new faces. This is on. I'll take it. How you going? Matt Swift, good to nice meet you. Nice to meet you. Word for word, somebody told me that you are <laughs> almost as good a full driver as me. Oi, there we go. <laughs> like, wow. I don't, wow. I don't know what that means, but that's what somebody told Mate, me. you got so. a lot to live up to, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Charlie from Mike Coleman. I'm here in our Mike Coleman Prado for this trip. Started off today at Oztrack Campus and their facility is honestly second to none. The showroom was amazing, everything set out. Absolutely fantastic to get in there and have a look at all their campers and their hybrid campers set up inside. Got to have a really, really detailed look through all of their caravans and their hybrid vans, which was really cool. So something that I hadn't had the chance to do before. A little bit of a tour around the place first. Everybody got to see all the ins and outs of all our hard floors and all our hybrid vans. Thanks to Thread 4x4, we are supporting breast cancer awareness. So on this trip for your 4x4, we're running pink tread boards. We've got Mike up here with a set on the Trek car, Charlie down there with a set on the Mike Coleman car and a few others through the convoy. So guys, get behind it. You buy them, $30 goes to the Breast Cancer Council. You'll see us out there on the Sunshine Coast supporting breast cancer. A great cause, guys. Make sure you're following. We rolled out of Oztrack Camp as a caboolture. We hit the highway all in convoy. It's always really fun traveling in convoy. You know, you jump on the radios, you're having a bit of a yarn to the rest of the crew. Big convoy of four-wheel drives. I've never had this many four-wheel drives when I've been four-wheel driving, especially when we go up the freeways and everyone's like trying to catch up to each other. I'm a Sunshine Coast local, so I knew exactly where we were going and what we were in for but I didn't say too much because I let them find out all the surprises along the way. From Caboolture, we headed up north, short drive, 100 kilometres roughly to the ferry that takes you from Noosa across to North Shore Beach. Unfortunately, my fishing buddy Jeff from Cooper couldn't make it on this trip, he's a bit crook. I was hoping that he could come and show me all his local fishing spots and uh, we could quieten these guys to the back. They'd be giving us a bit of stick over many years not catching any fish. We left the freeway and then met up where the ferry is. It was Jade's first time on the ferry. I was very nervous, unfortunately. <laughs> One of the great things about the little ferry crossing is literally is only probably about 25 metres of a crossing, but it cops an hour or so out of your trip. Guys, you've got to be prepared when you come out here and you must let your tyres down before you hit the sand. You see plenty of people out there all the time. They come straight off the ferry, straight off the bitumen, onto the sand and get bogged because their tyres are still at road pressures. We're letting ours down, we're going down to below 15 and our tyres are going to float across the top. We're going to save a lot of fuel and have a nice easy trip. You've also got to let the tyres down on your trailer. Now on the Australia camper here, I've gone down to 18 PSI, which I believe is the right balance for the sand, the conditions and the weight of this trailer. 
Now letting the tyres down on the trailer plays a number of important things. People think that letting it down increases the friction and the trailer is going to be harder to tow. But the fact is that letting the tyre down, extending that footprint, allows the trailer to sit up on top of the sand and float across it. So it's actually less resistance and it's easier to tow when you get out there and you're not going to get bogged down by your trailer. How awesome is that guys? Finally made it onto the beach. Look us. I've never actually been up this way and we have only just moved up from New South Wales. The distance that you can actually travel, we're used to again jumping on, jumping off the beach. Yeah, look at that. You want to live in any other place with you? Uh, no way. What a way to start the day. Just seeing the colour change with the wet weather and greenery through the surrounds, it looks pretty awesome. I've never been anywhere that you're just able to drive along the beach like this. Being a local, I get to enjoy this most weekends in the summer when I can get up here with the family. After getting off the highway and getting out of traffic and driven from Melbourne, it was beautiful just to get onto the beach. Across the ocean, you've got some of the hills and mountains in the background. It is 27 degrees outside. The sky is looking like a storm is about to come through. Humidity is right up, I can tell you that. The overcast hasn't spoiled any of the scenery. It's just picturesque from the beach right through the sand up to the mountains. It is still a beautiful time to get out. We're not limited just because it's overcast and rainy. We still enjoy it up here, hence the move. This is Queensland. This is the sunny state. It never rains up here. Jeff tells me this. He said, Mick, you should move to Queensland. It's the driest state in the country. I don't think so, but we should be all right, hopefully. Conditions are pretty good, guys. It's smooth. The sand is hard packed. The tide's in a little bit, but not too bad. So we'll shoot up here for about half an hour or so. We'll grab some lunch. Then we'll push on a bit further up to a campsite. We've got smooth sailing ahead of us for the entire day. Very uh, stark contrast to what we experienced in the, on the Air Peninsula. The sand there, we were forewarned. We still went on the beach, but it was just so soft. And we got a couple of vehicles, bogs, had to be winched off the beach before the tide came in. Everyone talks about the four-wheel drive culture in Queensland. Yep, they've got some mountains, they've got some places out west you can go to, but really, South Australia, you can drive every beach you want. Up here, it's beach culture. This is sensational. It's no wonder they're so popular and no wonder there's so much traffic, which raises the point of safety and make sure you maintain your speed. Driving on vegetated areas is just going to damage the environment and get this beach shut down. Driving through the water is just going to damage your vehicle. It is still a legitimate road, so road rules do apply. You can have the police patrolling the area, so you do want to be responsible. You don't want to be silly. Indicate your intentions. Driving on the sand, just keeping your distance from the cars in front of you and just being aware of the washouts. Just be careful of the ruts and the gutters. We were pushing the three tonne mark with these guys. You do need to pay a little bit more attention to general driving. Pick your lines, be very mindful when you're braking and accelerating out. That look beautiful from back here, that synchronised driving convoy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen and just read the rules. What you do on the roads, what you do on the beach. Nick from Oztrack, any advice on letting down the tyres on the trailer? Trailers are always good for 15 to 20, just a little bit softer than your vehicle, just so you can control all that weight behind you. And always remember to turn your electronic brakes off, you don't want an anchor when you're trying to stop. Didn't think about the electric brakes, better get those turned off. Very important to air down coming onto the beach, even though the sand was nicely tightly packed, Having that air out of your tyres is just going to give you a lot smoother ride. It's going to give you more of a footprint on the ground and give you more traction. I've gone 15 PSI all around and I've got the awesome Mickey Thompson Badger bosses on. Amazing, nice and tight and firm here, so it's good. Nice to see a little bit of colour in the cliffs. Yeah, that's what it's renowned for, especially when you go up towards Rainbow Beach. The sand colour is amazing. There's over 50 types of colours. Quite a good tourist spot. Hey Grant, how about a spot of lunch? Yeah, Simon, been a long morning, that'll be awesome. We pulled up for lunch at Tiwa Beach. We stopped there and ripped out the tables and made a bit of a snack quickly. Got to bust out all the new gear I've been given here for this trip. The fridge has been performing amazing. It's been pretty muggy today. We were going through a few ruts and sandy tracks. We handled the conditions perfectly. Food was nice and cool, drinks were ice cold. You want to get a good fridge to handle all this.
With stunning views to a company lunch, the crew were keen to hop back in the vehicles and tackle what the rest of the day had in store. That was a sight. We, we didn't understand what was going on at first when Simon started digging the little ditch. I heard Simon say he likes bringing toys along, so I brought some toys along. Simon laid down a challenge for us. Can they handle the ramp of death? Blaze red, fire burning tread, leap of faith. Boy, look at that wheel. We got the tread boards off the Iveco and we built a jump and unfortunately what happened? Oh, I think a bit too much weight, we stripped the teeth off the gear. I built the jump. I know, sorry. What have you got? I'm a vortex. Let's launch it. And the daughters got her RC car out over the boards and loved it, so we started hitting a bit faster and we got backflips going. Yeah. So that's the first time she's done backflips on hers and she loved it. I guess anyone that knows me personally, I love toys. So as soon as Christian and Jade popped out their remote control cars on the beach, I got pretty excited. They absolutely sent that thing, it was pretty sick. They do like 90 k's an hour, it's insane. It was really fun to watch. One of the unique things about beaches up here in Queensland is they're super wide, so they are really fun to drive. When you hit TUR Beach, you always check your speed because it is 50 and there are families around. But Jade made sure that I didn't go over the speed limit, so that was quite good. Not often you can get on a beach and just drive for close to an hour or two like we did. It was a really, really good experience. The kids absolutely loved it. We're out here on a Wednesday and the amount of people that are out here, it was just incredible just to see the sights. Being a regular sunny coast person, I do tend to go up the beach a lot in the summer with the family, especially up to Rainbow Beach. And on a good weekend, you'd get at least three to 400 cars along the water there. It's a great spectacle, it's a great day out, it's great for the kids, great for the family. The number of people camping, kids, families, just everybody out fishing, swimming on the boogie boards, making sand castles on the beach. Just as we came up this 50 kilometre stretch here, we just people all the way along there, really enjoying the environment, which is really great to see. And then as we got further along, we also had these little freshwater streams that come down the beach into the water, and it was definitely amazing. And honestly, I wouldn't give it up for anything. What do you reckon, Evan? Did you bring any fishing rods? No, nah, not for this trip, Simon, but um, even if I did, I wouldn't have any luck catching fish because I never do. Yeah, yeah, look, Simon, coming on a, your 4x4 four four trip for fishing is the kiss of death. Simon, I lost six kilos last time waiting for the fish to be caught on the Air Peninsula. Like, there's the biggest fish in the world go past their whales, and Jeffrey and Grant could not catch a fish in a boat before. Hang on, hang on, just a minute. Let's just get the record straight here. I did catch two fish. They went very big, but I did get something out of the water. I think sardines count really grand. <laughs> Very easy driving. There was two-wheel drive cars passing us today on the beach. Put a set of tread boards into your car, have a compressor that you can let your tires down. I think you'd be pretty safe most of the time. And you just gotta watch the tides. Shortly after cruising down the beach for a while, we arrived at Freshwater Campground. With this campground, you've actually got a pre-book online, which is quite handy, to be honest, because you know that there's obviously going to be space there for you. This time of year as well, it's quite difficult to get spot along the beach. There's plenty of people out. It's really good to see, to be honest. It has been another long, hard day here. The crew are hungry, I'm starving, and it's time to get some dinner on. Now tonight, I'm doing something a little bit different. So I snuck away about an hour ago, got the spear gun out, went out into the reef, and I shot myself some beautiful flathead. Now, I've whipped up some beer batter. I've got it here in the frying pan, and Lee's gonna cook up a treat. Got some fresh bread here, some salad, some potato salad. We're gonna whip up some fresh fish wraps. The guys are gonna love it, and it's another meal you can cook quickly and easily on the Oztrack kitchen. Tastes more like hokey.
We started off today on day two of the Your 4x4 trip at Freshwater Camping Area. Woke up this morning, it was a little bit overcast. Didn't look to be the most ideal day, but as you can see now, it looks absolutely spectacular. Morning, Nick. How did you guys sleep in the Talawala? Yeah, we actually had a really good night's sleep. So we decided uh, to try to fit the whole herd across the bed because it is a king mattress. So yeah, didn't get the swag out. And look, I'm not a small bloke in any dance, but yeah, we all fit very, very comfortably. So it just proves how much room is in these new Talawanas. And yeah, beautiful night. Can't wait for the rest of the trip. Hey Swifty, great to have you on board for your first Your 4x4 trip. Yeah Simo, first Your 4x4 and really excited. So it looks like we've got a really cool crew here. Looking forward to catching up with them around the camp tonight. Grant, I believe your passenger had a fairly rough night but he's feeling a bit better this morning. Yeah look, unfortunately bad timing. Uh, James picked up a bug first day of the trip. Had a bit of a rough day yesterday. So this morning he's keeping his food down and got a bit of a smiling face. Quite interesting getting along the beach. We've done a lot of beach work down in the Eyre Peninsula in South Australia, but nothing prepares you for some of the beaches you see in Queensland. They're just spectacular. We were in this really nice compact sand. Tide was still coming in, unfortunately, for us, so it meant that we had to get up into the higher ground in the sand, which means you're getting into the softer stuff. We then went along to go up to the lighthouse, but we couldn't get there because the tide was in. So we had to come back to the first entrance to get over to Double Island Point. Just looking at these conditions, looking down the beach towards the lighthouse, you can see the tide is coming in. It's coming in pretty quick. We don't know how far up it's going to come. I'm concerned that if we get up to the lighthouse, park up, go to the lighthouse, maybe the tide will go back out, maybe it will come in further. It's just not worth taking the risk. So we're gonna turn around, bypass the lighthouse and the point, go back through the inland route and we'll cross over to Rainbow Beach. That should be a safer, probably a smarter choice to make. We'll turn around, we'll head through the cutting and then head on to the other side to Double Island Point. How's oh, tracky, all right to go, you stuff? Uh, I think we're down, guys. Yeah, we're down. Unfortunately, the guys with the caravan did get a little stuck. Nothing a quick recovery couldn't fix. Snatch straps rolled out, make it happen really fast. Oh, uh went too far up into the soft. So, didn't have much of a choice since obviously the water's coming up, but yeah, just chose the wrong lane and uh, yeah, ended up where we are. So not too bad. Nice, easy uh, snatch out and that will be ready to go again. So unfortunately, Mike of all people was in front of them. Mike has had some serious issues with CV joints in the past. So having pretty heavy rig as well, having to pull both vehicles, we were a bit worried about breaking something there, but he managed to pull them out and we got them free. Just gave him a little bit of a tug and we had them out of the sand and back onto the hard compacted stuff and away they went. There's a short little detour around the back that takes you through to Rainbow Beach. Unfortunately, the Austrack camp got bogged just as we were exiting the beach. Come on, come on, come on, big girl, you can do it. Nothing a quick recovery couldn't fix couple of snatch straps, some soft shackles, a couple of snigs on the end of the snatch strap and they pop straight out. We wanted to help but it was more interesting and fun to watch it and film it. So we sort of watched them get snatched up the beach and as soon as they were free we all followed through. There was three or four cars after us just flattened it and went through. Join us next week as our epic five-part adventure continues as we make our way along Rainbow Beach, admiring the breathtaking scenery. Take our cars for a swim and face more challenges along the way. All this and more in part two of our Sunshine Coast adventure. Who's going to get stuck today? Oh, look, to be honest, probably me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with Mike, because he's very vocal and trick. Probably tipping Simon, I reckon. Um, Simon is. <laughs>